Here we go. How to become a millionaire making comics. And that's not just a millionaire in general, but become a millionaire in a year, 12 months. If you want to know exactly how many comics you need to create and sell this year to become a millionaire and what it actually takes to create such a hit, then this video is for you. I'm going to break down exactly what printing costs are. I break down how much creators make for every comic they sell after calculating printing, distribution, shipping, and any other kind of publisher or creator split. Then the whole how to create a, a hit comic aspect, I'm going to break down briefly towards the end of the video, but I'm going to break it down in more detail in other videos as well. Uh, so on that note, I'm Lord Max. I'm a best-selling comic creator, film producer, screenwriter, and all-around maniac. I have a book that's coming out next month, February of 2023. It is titled Liquid Kill. I'm going to put uh, in all my videos going forward, I'm going to start putting in the details for that just, just in case I can get a little bit um, extra uh, sales that way. But anyway, I'm just going to jump right into it and uh, preface the video by saying I was originally going to title this or like break it down by how to get to 100K in comics within a year. But in doing that, I realized that the, kind of my math could easily be scaled up just a little bit. And... Uh, it's just a more appealing and attractive number to, to see a million. And by, once you see this, you're going to realize it's not that outrageous of a thing. And um, if you kind of take this path to get to 100K, it's really not that hop, skip, and a jump to get to a million. I mean, obviously, the, there, it's a major jump, but you'll see what I mean as we break it down. Anyway, so let's just go. There's a lot of numbers that I need to go over. And some of this stuff, for those who um, are in the comic industry and those who are, have no idea about anything about it, I'm kind of right in the, in the middle to where you might want to know a little bit about the comic industry in order to make sense of this, and you may need to look some things up. Um, and if you are already in the industry, and a lot of this stuff hasn't been obvious, and that's kind of why I'm here, is I'm going to break it down in sort of layman's terms that you may or may not know. But so... For those who don't know, an average comic book is about 32 pages, and it sells at a retail price of $4 USD, at least as of early 2023. An average comic book is what we call an issue. Um, and although it's 32 pages, the actual story pages can vary between 20 and like 24 pages usually, and some of that extra is um, sort of either ads or... Uh, um, kind of like bonus material and like uh, creditor crediting pages and things like that anyway point being is from a money and paper perspective you can imagine it as 32 pages selling at four dollars um, the reason that's important is because printing costs are a major factor in, in understanding all this so in a sort of a whole market breakdown, it's like this. A publisher usually sells the books to a distributor at a 40% retail price, or $1.60. The distributor then sells the books to the comic shops at 50% retail, or $2 a book, allowing the distributor to profit 10%, or $0.40 cents per copy sold. The comic shops then sell the books to the consumer at full retail price, or $4, allowing the comic shop to profit about $2 per issue. So long as they can sell the books above $2, they make a profit. So if you're say, seeing books more than half off, they're most likely taking a loss. Um, the comic shop is the real buyer in this scenario. And this whole scenario with the comic shops is what we call the direct market. And that's mainly all I'm talking about today. And this is what the direct market means we're selling through local comic shops. Uh, so the comic shops in this whole scenario here of the, the whole way the comics work through the direct market, the comic shops are basically taking the most risk. So they reach out to the distributor and they take their orders. Once they buy a shipment from the distributor, the publishers and creators get paid, regardless of whether or not anyone actually buys the books from the comic shop. Unless the shops can return unsold books to the distributor, which isn't the case for most distributors, um, but that gets a bit in the weeds. So for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to factor in returns. It is a thing, but I'm not going to go over that here. Um, we're going to pretend that once it goes to the shop, it's the creator gets paid. 
So it's up to the comic shops to actually sell the books to the readers. This is why the creator's real customer is the comic shop. Um, but when but the comic shops don't buy the books unless they're pretty certain that they have readers to buy them from them. Otherwise, they're just taking a huge risk and most likely a loss. Uh, and because of this, comic shops are hesitant to buy especially in, like very new or unknown independent books because of that risk. It's just like movies. Distributors aren't going to buy a movie that doesn't have a star um, or some other kind of major uh, power that is going to get people to watch it. It's the same with comic books. But in, in the comic book case, the star is the artist or the writer or even just the characters. Um, and if they're not relying on that, they have to rely on genre. And that's why high concept plots heavily genre uh like books that are like you know clearly horror or sci-fi or sexy or something like that to where the comic shops just know they're going to sell it because it's got a sexy lady on the front or it's a clear creature horror kind of thing and they just know they have readers that are down for that kind of stuff other than that you need a name uh artist or writer or character um to really pull in a lot of sales but point being so Usually the amount of readers a shop has determines the amount of books a comic shop will buy. The comic shop puts in the orders to the distributor, then the distributor informs the publisher of their order. The publisher then rounds up that order and pays a printing company to print them and send them to the distributor. And thus begins the cycle of what we call a print run. The whole reason I break all that down is for you to understand kind of the broad understanding of the life of a print run and i'm now going to go over so at, through through that print run how much does the creator make so the publisher and the creative team they usually split the profits after printing about 50 50 therefore the publisher and creator split a dollar 60 per issue meaning they each get 80 cents per issue before printing for example, let's say 10,000 copies are printed and all 10,000 are sold to a distributor. It'll come out like this. The publisher sells all 10,000 copies to the distributor at $1.60, meaning they make sixteen grand. However, for a 10,000 issue print run, they have to subtract the printing costs, which is about 50 cents per issue or five grand for that level of a print run. Thus, the publisher and creator have now split $11,000, meaning they get $5,500 each. As the print runs go higher, the printing costs go down. Therefore, you'll make more per issue after the printing costs are covered. So let's expand a bit more. Everything that's going to come after this, you'll understand, it really depends on how many issues you can sell month to month and how many are printed each month um, and a big factor of that is printing costs printing costs are usually 40 to 60 cents per issue if you're printing between 4,000 and 40,000 copies at one time I get these numbers based off of experience in the past but you can also go to printninja.com and fill in their quote calculator to get a, a, a more accurate understanding from an actual printer. Um, so it's not like it, you, and you can see in real time what it actually looks like. Now these numbers don't include shipping, um, but often bigger publishers work with nearby printers to avoid shipping costs. At least the cost of shipping overseas or by train or air and stuff like that. But um, if that's not the case, you can assume shipping costs are anywhere between another two to ten k for every print run between four and forty thousand. The reason I'm doing four and forty thousand is because those are understandable print runs. Now, when we're getting to a million dollars a year, the print runs are all going to be higher than that. But in order to be somewhat conservative, I'm just keeping these same print run numbers, uh, and so you can kind of have an understanding. Uh, it, it it's sort of like Basically, once you're at a print run of 20000 or more, you can assume that your printing costs are going to be 
40 to 50 cents per issue. So as I get down later, get into the numbers later down the line, and you're starting to have print runs all over 20K, we can assume that the printing costs are 50 cents, or sorry, 40 cents or below, which means the creators are making an average of 60 cents or more per issue. And we're going to use that 60 cents number for what comes later. Um, publishers that are printing more than this, they're probably, they may be, you know, printing at 30 cents per issue or, or, or less. I'm not really sure because I've never had print runs that high. Um, but here's the other factor that we're going to get into that I'm going to calculate in here. And that is that the first issue of a series usually sells two to four times as many as the later issues. So to make things simple, we're going to pretend that you're creating a six-issue arc for your series. And to make things simpler again, we're going to assume your issue two sales are only 50% of your issue one sales. And that all of your remaining issues only sell about 25% of your issue one sales numbers. This is typical. Um, I'm not going to go into exactly why this is. It's because the first issue is a lot of speculators that are basically trying to sell books at, uh, at a later date for a higher price. It's, it's a whole like an investment thing um, and a collector's market. And then after that, you get to your actual reader's numbers. And the readers are a lot less uh, than, um, not saying that there's less readers than collectors. It's just that... Uh, you, you can typically expect your later issues to sell less by about 50%. And by the time you're getting to your later issues, it's literally like a quarter of what you were selling your issue one at. So now I'm going to go over some of the, the fun part, I guess you could say, which is with, uh, let's just say with one six-issue volume, how many issues do you need to sell to get to a, a million dollars in sales? So here's here's where I, what I've got. You need to sell about 1.7 million issues of it uh, issues total in order to get to a million dollars, and that's if you're making 60 cents per issue, which means your printing costs are about. Uh, 40 cents or below so uh, let's just break that down even further so that means that your your very first issue needs to sell around 700,000 um, issues you need to sell 700,000 issues on your launch and then and then hope that your issue 2 is you know maybe at 40% of that and then you're you're still selling two hundred and eighty thousand, and then your issue three is probably selling two hundred and thirty thousand. Issue four, two hundred to two hundred and ten. Issue five, one hundred seventy five, and issue six is probably selling around one hundred forty thousand to get to about roughly one point seven million issues sold, and then you'll make a million dollars. So. That's the, 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 the math. Obviously, that's I don't know of anything, even the biggest hits that have ever been released that are, that are reaching those numbers. You might hit an issue one that's selling maybe close to that. I think like literally the bestseller Berserker was like something close to that. But I don't think they're selling six, you know, more issues of that series that are all selling, you know, half, even half that. Um, if so, they are just crushing it. So even if you're not just writing one series, you're going to have to write at least like four mega hit volumes a year. In a more literal sense, you'll have to write four six issue volumes a year that are all essentially the best selling indie comics of that year in the top 10 for sure. Um, if you write four six issue volumes and they all release this year, they need to launch at a hundred thousand, a hundred eighty thousand issues or more, and then have an average remaining readership that's probably at least fifty to eighty thousand as well. Um, 
I don't know any creator that's actually hitting this mark in that way. There's a lot that are close, you know. There's your uh, your Spawn uh, saga, Walking Dead. Literally the best, the handful of best-selling creator-owned series you've ever heard of in the past 20 years uh, are hitting this mark. Um, but even that, it's like when you're seeing a creator that's doing that, that it's not often that all you know that they're releasing more than one series and all of them are hitting this which is where i'm going to go into the kind of more realistic way to become a millionaire making comics which isn't all within just one year it's kind of a, if you were to look at making comics as a 10 plus year long game how are you going to get there and what are the steps you take and at a more reasonable amount of like not just being like i all i do is sell the best selling books every step of the way how would you get there and you'll find that this there what i'm going to go over is is it's been done multiple times almost anyone you know with the with big names follows this path um so here we go it's basically like you'll want to release at least about four volumes a year and you'll want them to all launch around launch so that means they're the first issue one sells about 50,000 copies through the direct market and that would mean that your average monthly reader is probably around 15 to 20 K if you can do that you can usually expect a probably a six-figure salary probably somewhere you know 200 K plus um, on top of that it would make things a lot easier if you had a contract or salary job with one of the big two that can bring you closer to another six figures or, or like writing for TV or something like that and you'll find there's a lot of professionals doing this they write for a TV series or they're writing for the big two or, or an artist for the big two and then while they do that they're also releasing two or three of their own creator owned series through one of the other bigger uh, publishers like boom or image and things like that so most likely if you're selling anywhere near the numbers i was saying to where you're getting 15 plus thousand readers every issue um, you already are in the professional game and you already have a writing gig with uh, you know a regular writing gig somewhere either with a studio video games marvel or dc or something like that if you're not but and you're selling these numbers you're gonna get invited real fast so in addition to direct market retail sales you'll have to then sell licenses um, to have your book published overseas or have your IP option to become a film or TV series then you'll want to hustle merchandise like stickers or clothing and then you'll want to manage to do the uh, all of those within um, a reasonable time frame and let's just say so you have the contract job you're releasing multiple volumes a year now let's just say and then you have a, each one of those series optioned and you're also selling merchandise for each one of those all of that uh, that let's just say within 12 months you're doing all that let's say 12 months to three years um, you're releasing multiple of your own creator own work e each year you also have your own ongoing series with somebody or you have a TV writing gig that's high paying salaried or something all that together overseas licenses and stuff like that you might be getting close to half a million maybe um, so in addition to this or maybe even as an alternative to the direct market you're gonna need to sell directly to your fans excuse me um and earn a hundred percent of the revenue you see a lot of people doing this this is like you know the um snyder's selling on or like having their sub stack because whenever you can get your 10 to fifteen thousand fans to buy direct physical physical issues directly from you and you're taking in 50 to 100 percent of those profits instead of just the you know 15 percent through the direct market you can get to a half a million a lot faster, um, even after printing and shipping. Um, so it's kind of like you're going to go through the direct market then and do every business avenue there is through that. 
then you're also going to be going through your own, through your direct fans, through your website or whatever that is, selling directly to them, some kind of series, plus your own merch or something like that. Plus you have a salaried gig somehow. Um, now you're getting close. Now you're getting enough to where you have enough, you can take in at least half of that income that you're making. A lot of work. Um, and that's where like the, the final thing that's a big deal that you're going to have to do is take a lot of that income and invest it into something else. Um, no matter what methods you're doing in to bring in uh, monthly income and sales, the fast track to a million is then investing a lot of that income. Um, you'll find uh, creators investing into real estate. You'll find them investing into brick and mortar businesses, even comic shops or restaurants. You'll find them investing into markets, stocks, bonds, crypto. You'll find them investing in other creators, investing in their own IP as uh, you know, executive producing their IP into a film or something like that. Um, whatever it is, it, the big factor is investing a lot of that income that they're making into themselves, into other creators, into the own industry that they're in, and then also into something outside of it, something stable, as they call hard assets. Um, and that, uh, over time, um, is how you really build um, wealth in comics, I guess you could say. And you're going to, almost anybody that, the big names that you know are following methods like this. These are your Mark Millars, your Snyders, your Kirkmans, Sean Gordon Murphy, Neil Gaiman. Probably less than 20 comic creators are in this category of uh, millionaires, um, unless you include the manga creators. But nonetheless, I think you get the gist of what I'm explaining here. So if you have that in mind and you have a 10-year horizon, it's really not that mind-blowing to understand that it's like you have kind of your day job so to speak in the industry and then you're writing your own creator own series building a name trying to get those up to where you're making hit numbers um, earning back that income trying to write hits that can be uh, converted into other medium expanding into other countries having them translated going directly to your fans, selling directly to them, including in merchandising, selling um, your IP in virtually all mediums all over the place through the direct market and directly to your fans, and then taking half that uh, income, reinvesting it into yourself, your own company, your own IP, to expand it yourself or with other companies, or investing into uh, other businesses that can earn you more income, um, and, and you have a long horizon, you, do, you play the long game, and you just try to, you know, never in there am I saying get better at your work, but that is, uh, I, be, I would hope that that's understood as part of the whole process. You can't do any of this if what you're creating isn't any good. Um, so now for the final aspect is, uh, yeah, so okay, now I know that, I understand that in order to make a million dollars, I have to sell at least a million books, duh. Uh, so how do I actually write million dollar uh, hit comic books? So that I am going to go over very briefly, because that is a, sort of a, the big mystery unknown topic, uh, and it's complex, but I'm going to go into like the five key aspects to doing that. I think the, the number one is genre marketing so you're writing for a specific group that you know is going to buy it and one of the biggest ways that people do that is they pick their tribe and they write for their tribe and by tribe i mean like a political market um those who buy books not just for the entertainment but because it's also supporting the causes they care about are often how you uh, break out of just, uh, you know, break into a, a higher class, so to speak, of sales. You'll see this all the time. Wh whichever side people are writing for, the message is what people care about. They care less about the actual story and more about the message that's being pushed. Um, and this isn't, I'm not saying this is a good or bad thing. I'm just saying it's one thing that I notice as like, it, it's, 
is uh, expanding your market based upon not just story, um, but a specific genre. And it's not just political. That can also be uh, something like horror that people buy, not just because it's a comic book, but because they just like the horror aspect of it. This is also things like people that just like magic and you and you market directly to magic. There's a lot of people that call this, um, you know, it, the, the riches are in the niches in that, you, you know, whenever you're, you're not just trying to sell directly to comic fans, you're trying to sell to fans of a certain thing. You're trying to sell to people that are into gymnastics or something like that. So you write a book that's about a, 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 a winning, you know, an under, underdog story of a gymnastics team or something like that or martial arts. Um, or so you're picking an audience and you're targeting them and your medium happens to be comics, but you're, you're expanding into something that's not just people that are into niche comics. You're, you're expanding into a market that's way bigger than comics because you're now going after anybody that's into karate or whatever. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm not going to dwell on it any further. The next thing that is, that can get you there is, uh, understanding basically memorable characters and character design and that's if it's it's sort of in the same whole um, audience aspect but the point I'm getting at here is if you can come up with something that's memorable something that's uh, a good example of this is like Jason from Friday the 13th something that's just like you see the picture of this person at least at the time, that was like a unique thing. Someone wearing a hockey mask and a machete. Something that's like, that is the thing. It's new. It's never really been seen before. It's memorable. If you can come up with characters that are memorable. A, 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 now a recent good one is Chainsaw Man. You know, there's there's not much that's seen that looks like you see Chainsaw Man. You know immediately what it is. You don't know, have to know anything about that story or nothing. It's just like, it's... The title alone, along with that character, it's like, boom. I think uh, you can get a grasp of kind of what you're going to get into just by seeing that. When you can come up with something like that, that's just like internationally understood with one second of looking at it with a title and a memorable character, you're done. <laughs> like that's You've done a, a, a major portion of what it takes to become a hit right there if you can come up with something that's like that, that's really interesting. The third thing that I'm going to go into is basically um, hit con like high concept, hit story structure, and I have a whole other video that goes into this in that it, as long as you can write something that has some kind of emotional draw to where if, if they, we keep coming back because it's pulling our emotional strings and we're going through the emotional cocktail of rising and falling that so it pulls so much out of us or like it makes you f feel empathetic towards a character to win or take revenge or whatever that is to where we just want to keep following that story or fall in love or whatever it is uh, that is a key aspect it's a, an emotional draw and and this is explained through a lot of books can go into how this is done it's a, there's a science to it. Uh, it's it's when you're wa when you're reading something that um, makes you feel sorry for someone or makes you your blood boil and hate someone. Those feelings are like release endorphins in us that keep us addicted, um, just like drugs. Um, and so we're addicted to the story. So this. Ca um, the whole point of the, like high concept and, and hit story structure is that it keeps the reader addicted to the story. So if you have a memorable character, your story is addictive, um, and you're writing for a huge market that's not just comic readers, but something bigger than that, you're gonna hit. Uh, uh, you're gonna do well. <laughs> um, I hope I explained that well enough. I will probably make another video that breaks down those three things in more detail, but I hope this was helpful for anybody. 
If so, please like and subscribe so I can try to continue growing my community and continue to sell my own books. <laughs> um, thanks. See ya.